Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 20 of our ratio analysis video series and in this installment we learn all about the net income margins. In simple terms, net income margin is a profitability ratio that calculates how much percentage of company's earnings is left after deducting all the operating and the non-operating expenses. So in this tutorial, we basically have four things to discuss. Number one, understand what net income margin is. Number two, its formula and calculations. Number three, calculate net income margins for Colgate case study. And number four, its interpretations and uses. But before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder. We will be needing all the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so from the link in the description box below. And also, to keep yourself updated with the investment banking and core finance topics, please do subscribe to our channel, Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is net profit margins? Net profit margins is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the operating profitability category. In our previous videos, we learned what is gross profit margins and operating profit margins. In this one, we'll look at what is the net profit margins. So in order to understand what is net profit margins, you need to first look at what is net profit. So uh, it's very simple actually. And if you look at the flow of uh, the income statement, you will get it soon. So let's look at the flow of the income statement. It starts with sales. And while we calculated the gross profits, we deducted COGS or the direct costs from there in order to get to the gross profit, right? So all the direct costs when we removed from sales, we got to the gross profit. Then the second we discussed was the operating profit. And for operating profit, we deducted all the indirect expenses like selling general and admin expenses, then the depreciation and amortization expense. So we deducted these uh, indirect expenses to get the operating profit, right? So how is operating profit calculated? Once you arrive at the gross profit, you deduct SGN expense and depreciation and amortization expense. And if there are any other indirect expenses, you also can include that. So once you deduct these two from this one of gross profit, you get the operating profit. Now from the operating profit, there could be other income and expenses which are leftovers, right? So uh, there could be other expense, other income, there could be interest expenses. Interest expenses could be from the debt, you know, the company may have taken. And then there are taxes, right? The taxes that you pay to the government. So let's follow a logical flow of the income statement from the operating profit. You could have this other income and expenses. And then you can also have this interest expense. Right. So what do we get is earnings before taxes or EBT earnings before taxes and from the earnings before taxes at a certain tax rate, you pay the taxes and what you get is the net profit. Okay. So this is how your net profit comes into picture. So remember that this net profit also includes all the recurring and the non recurring items. Recurring means that happens every year and the non recurring items are the ones which happens once in a year or maybe once in a while. So uh, those are not part of the core business. So that also can form a part of this and net profit includes that expense or income. So once you get the net income, the net profit margins would be just the net profit divided by your sales, right? So the formula is pretty straightforward. You calculate the net profit and you divide it by uh, the sales, the top, top line number and you multiply it by 100. Or if you're using Excel, you can just directly convert it into percentage. Okay, so this is how you actually go about calculating the uh, net profit margins. Let us now do a quick calculation of net profit margins here since we have the income statement flow and I'll put some random numbers here in order to get to the final calculations. So let's say sales is 1000 cost of goods sold is 400. So we get gross profit as 1000 minus 400 that is 600 SGN expense selling general and admin expense. Let's say it's 100 depreciation and amortization 50 
so we get the operating profit as 600 minus 100 minus 50 that is 450 other income and expense let's say it was expense so uh, let's say it was 100 interest expense let's say it was 200 so how much is that earnings before taxes ebt that is 450 minus 100 minus 200 okay so this comes out to be 150 let's say tax is at the rate of 40 percent so we get this multiplied by 40 percent will be the taxes so it is 60 so the net profit comes out to be 150 minus 60 that is 90 okay so first step was to calculate the net profit and the second step is in order to calculate the net profit margins it is net profit divided by sales so that is net profit is 90 and sales is 1000 so it comes out to be how much this is 9 percent let us now discuss the net profit margins of some of the sectors earlier we had discussed about the hospitality sector and uh, we also discussed about the retail sector i think auto services and uh, restaurants okay so we have discussed a couple of sectors when we were uh, looking at the gross profit margins how many how much was the gross profit margins of this sector i think for hospitality it was around 75 percent retail it's generally around 20 uh, percent auto services again it's around 20 percent in restaurants it's around 70 percent now let's see how the net profit margins look like Okay, so hospitality on one side, on the gross basis, they were generating 75%. But on a net basis, if you look at, they are hardly able to generate around 8%. Okay, so that's a very drastic difference between, you know, how much gross margin is and how much net profit margin is. This is primarily because in hospitality, if you look at, lots of costs are uh, spread across, um, you know, spending in hotels, right? and uh, generating uh, they have lots of capital assets so if you consider depreciation amortization and other interest expenses because they are also heavy on debt the net profit margins actually reduces significantly if you look at the retail sector it was 20 percent of gross margins and they are able to generate around five percent so retail as a sector actually is a wafer thin margin business so it's a high volume and a low profit margin business. If the volumes are really low, then it can easily go into red. So that would become a loss making unit altogether. For auto services unit, of course, gross margins was very low because you know the raw material cost and the labor costs are pretty high, but uh, you know they are not too much dependent on debt and uh, there's not much into uh, you know uh, the capital assets. So depreciation and amortization cost for them is also pretty low. And they generate a healthy 12% uh, profit margins, I guess. So that's uh, how, you know, uh, the difference is on one side, 75% and they're able to generate only 8%. But in auto services, you know, you can see gross margins is 20%, but net profit margin is much higher. You know, it is at 12%. For restaurants, again, it, it's similar to hospitality. They generate very high uh, gross profit margins, but at the net level, they are around 15%. So Please note that these are some of the average numbers. So if you pick some industry, some company, they might not match. But yes, uh, these are broadly how the industry and the sectors would look like. So now that you have understood the net profit margins, how it is calculated and what are the general uh, profit margins from uh, for some of the sectors, let's now look at Colgate's net profit margin. So let us now look at the calculation of net profit margins in the case of Colgate. So here we have the income statement and uh, the income statement does provide us with lots of information and of course it does provide us with uh, the net income numbers as well but let me just quickly discuss this uh, uh, so that uh, we are uh, uh, well aware of the kind of items line items which are found in colgate the net sales numbers are there and the cost of direct sales when we reduce this will give us the gross profit right so after the cost of direct sales is uh, reduced, we, we get the gross profit and from the gross profit, when we reduce the indirect expenses, these are like selling general and admin expense, we'll get the EBIT. And then after that, from the earnings before interest in taxes, when we reduce interest and other expenses, which, likes, uh, which are like non-service related post-retirement cost in Colgate, 
we get the earnings before tax. So from this, when we deduct the income tax, we get the net income. All right. So this is the net income when we consider the total shareholders, including the minority shareholders as well as the majority shareholders. So uh, this is the total net income. And when we uh, give the shares of the minority shareholders, it's net income attributable to uh, the minority shareholders. When it is deducted, we get the net net income, which is for the majority shareholders only. All right. So this is what we have now. The calculations are fairly simple. Of course, you can directly divide this net income by sales to get the net profit margin. Okay, so the net profit margins in this case comes out to be 16.4%. And uh, if you have looked at the previous videos as well, uh, we did do the vertical analysis. And in the vertical analysis, we had divided each and every line item by sales. So if you look at this row number 45, you will note that you have already calculated the net profit margins or the net income margins. That is income attributable to Colgate's and divided by sales. So how is the trend like? The net income margins have been kind of volatile. It has reduced in 2017. Then it was back at 15.4 and most recently it was around 16.4%. How does it look like as compared to Procter & Gamble? Procter & Gamble's net profit margins is around 18.5%. So yes, Procter & Gamble is doing a better job from the point of view of net profit margins basis. But uh, uh, coming to the conclusion directly that Colgate is not doing a great job, in, if you have to come to that conclusion, before that, you need to compare it with the whole industry as such. So just comparing it with one company will not give you the right inference. So I hope you understood what is net income margin, how it is calculated and how it is interpreted. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comments section. Also, we come up with very interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notification about our latest videos as soon as we release one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day. Thank you.